The tips you're about to learn are going to give you so much more time to have creative freedom and have fun in DaVinci Resolve instead of getting through those tedious, mindless, boring tasks that come inherently with video editing. And if you think you know one of these tips, stay tuned because within each tip, it's like a tip within a tip that makes that tip even better. So let's speed up your workflow, make DaVinci that much easier, that much faster, and let's dive right in with tip number one, import folder structure. So most of the times people just click and drag into this area to import their media, which if you do that and you have a nice folder structure like this one where all your cameras are labeled, all your audio is labeled, and you click and drag that whole folder and you put it in the media pool, well, all of your structuring is totally gone. It's just an absolute mess. You're having to look for things or you have to spend a bunch of time creating bins and dragging and dropping it that way. So instead of doing that, just click and drag your folder. And instead of going into the large media pool section, go to that sidebar and right under master, if you drop it in right there, it will keep your folder structure. It will keep you organized and it's going to make things so much easier to find. And the tip within a tip here, is if I wanna see everything from my A7S III and also my GoPro, you know, typically you click through here and you would have your A7S III and then I wanna see GoPro Connor. Well, if I just hold down Command and click my A7S III, now all of that footage from both of those cameras is in the media pool. And you can keep doing that with whatever media, whatever folders you want to see, and you can still get a list of everything within the folder selected without making it messy with maybe a bunch of assets or audio that you're not trying to find at that moment. Tip number two is in, out, place. And this makes things so much faster when you're getting together that first draft of your video. For this video, it was an interview with Bert Kreischer, wake surfing. And we know with interviews, we just want to get the interview part done, eventually overlay and be creative, but let's just get the clips that we need. So the standard keyboard shortcuts i stands for in which is the start of the clip and o stands for out which is the end of the clip as you see there now within this clip i have an in and an out point and if you only see one viewer window just make sure to go up here and click that button you'll see that little split view and that will make sure that you can see your media source footage here and your timeline will be on this larger window so once those in and out points are selected, I just hit P and that's going to add it to my timeline. Now that's not gonna work for you right now if you're following along because that's a keyboard shortcut I created. If you click down below, you can download my keyboard shortcuts and just import it and it's easy and you know you have exactly what I have here. But I'm still gonna show you real quick if you wanna make your own keyboard shortcuts, maybe you wanna take some of these but not all of them, go ahead and click DaVinci Resolve, go to Keyboard Customization, and once you have that pulled up, go ahead and hit P and you'll see that that is usually Cinema Viewer. Now, I don't use that. So I'm going to click Cinema Viewer, come down here, find that and deselect P, delete that from there. So with the P selected, I'm going to type append to end, make sure I've got edit selected here and append to end of timeline, which is usually, was that shift F12? I'm not gonna use that. So I'm gonna type in right there, click the add button, hit P on my keyboard and hit save. There's gonna be a couple keyboard shortcuts that I'm gonna be creating here and I will teach you how to do it. We'll do it real fast, but if you really wanna be quick with it, just download and import it down below. It makes it so much easier. So continuing with IOP, I can just hover over my footage here and it will play in that source viewer if you have live media preview selected up here. And I, I know there's a lot of tips within tips and, and it's a lot to check and do, but if you don't have the patience to uh, follow along and get these awesome tips, then you probably don't have the patience to be a video editor. So moving on, as I scrub over this footage, maybe I want to add this little section where Austin does a foil backflip. Well, I don't have to be double clicking. I can just hover scrub, hold I, he lands it, he's starting to get away there. I hit O, I hit P, and now that's at the end of my timeline. And so it's really easy to just go through all of your footage, I, O, P, and you are now building out your whole entire timeline. Okay, I'm sorry, we've got another tip within that. Go to the cut page and hit this button up here. That's source tape. That's going to put all of your clips in the selected folder in a timeline. So if you wanna make things really fast, I can just Scroll through right here, I, O, P, adds the timeline. And then right here, it looks like that's where he starts wake surfing. I, O, P, 
add a timeline. And you can really quickly, especially with this source tape, just put your whole entire timeline together. It's a game changer. But like I said, with the IOP, we're just getting the framework done, right? We're not going to be getting it in the perfect spot. Just get it roughly in the right area because this next tip is gonna make sure that the beginning and end of the clip is exactly where you want it to be. And that's Q and W. If you already downloaded and imported my keyboard customization, don't worry about this. But if you have not, go to your keyboard customization tab again, you'll see Q is source timeline viewer and W is dynamic trim mode. I never use those, so that's why I swapped these out. Go ahead and click source timeline viewer and hit the X to remove it from Q. Hit dynamic trim mode from W and hit the X to remove it and type in start to playhead. Go under ripple and you can keep that if you want, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna hit this plus button and hit Q and then W is going to be the same but we're just going to put end to playhead. Make sure you go under ripple, you're in the trim section over here on the side and we're going to do the same plus button, W, and then hit save and add that to your custom presets, keyboard shortcuts if you didn't add mine. So what does that do? So let's look at this clip. Now the interview doesn't start until about right there. Now, most of the times there are multiple ways to do this. The slowest way is to hit your blade tool, cut that, grab, go back to selection mode, delete that, click the space in between, delete that, and now you've trimmed your clip. That way sucks and so do pretty much all the other ways. So with that clip selected, I can just move to the point where it starts and hit Q, and that's going to ripple trim and say, hey, I want the clip to start right here. So always think that Q is where I want the clip to start here and move over so there is no weird gap. Now W is the same exact thing, but for the end of the clip. Right here on this clip, I can see that Austin pulls out his phone and Bert's about to fall off the wave. So I'm going to end the clip right here, W, same thing. Here's where I want the clip to end, but move everything over so there is no weird gap and it makes things so much faster. Another fun quick tip, doesn't take any keyboard shortcuts. If you hold down option and you click and drag any clip, it's gonna copy and paste it for you. So yeah, there's a fun extra. Now speed ramping in DaVinci Resolve, it's not great. And it's my biggest gripe with DaVinci, but I film action sports, I need to speed ramp. And speed ramping is when something starts fast and slowly starts to go slow or vice versa. And the system isn't great, but there are a few things you can do to make it just a little bit faster and a little bit easier to use. So with this clip, I've got Austin doing a backflip on his foil and in full speed, still looks sick, but I wanna really slow it down once he's getting upside down. So I'm going to hit Command R and that's going to bring up our speed change. Now you can either click here and go to add speed point where you want to start to slow it down or you can get a keyboard shortcut if you download mine down below and just hit X and it's going to add a speed point right there. Then scroll to where you want the slow-mo to end right as he's landing and we're gonna hit X again and click this drop down, get it to the speed that you want. This was 120 frames per second, so I'm gonna do 25% speed and then I'm going to hit Shift C and that's gonna bring up our retime curve where you can see your keyframes and if you select them and go right here, you can ease in and out of each of those points. So it's not a super abrupt, fast, slow, fast. It's going to be a nice speed ramp. And then of course they get it to go away, Shift C, Command R, and we're back to our regular timeline. Well, all these clips, they look gross. They were shot in S-Log, so we're gonna go over to the color tab. Now I'm not gonna teach you how to color grade. There are plenty of colorists out there, but if you already have one clip color graded, you like how it looks, a quick way to apply it versus highlighting all of it, copying and paste it, or having to create a still and import that, is to just select the clip that you wanna grade, and then middle mouse click on the clip that's already graded, and it's going to add that same exact grade. With all of these clips right here, they're pretty much shot in the same light, so I can just apply all of that to every single clip, and now every clip on my timeline in that scene has a color grade on it, and it looks pretty good. Now the next tip has nothing to do with the software of DaVinci Resolve, but the hardware you're going to be using. And, and get a mouse. Get a mouse with programmable buttons. This is the Logitech MX Master. It's got a scroll wheel on the side and even a really cool thumb press right there where when you hold it down and swipe a certain direction, it will follow any keyboard shortcut or whatever you want to put it to. So if you're on a Mac, I would highly suggest grabbing one of these. If you're on a Windows, 
I really liked this Logitech G602. It's got a lot more buttons and it's not working on my Mac, but the MX Master 3, also great, pros and cons, but get yourself a programmable mouse because with this mouse, I can quickly and easily, let's say I wanna cut this, I've got that on my thumb right there. And then let's say I wanna delete this section, I've got that right here. I wanna start and stop playing. I just click down on my thumb and I'm starting and stopping playing without having to memorize a bunch of keyboard shortcuts for the things that I most often do. And you've got the horizontal scroll wheel, which is nice. And it also has a button in between the left and right click and I have that mapped to linking. So if I don't wanna select the audio and the video, I just wanna select exactly what I click on, I'm able to do that and then get back to linking mode with a simple mouse click. Of course, once you get this mouse, you're going to have to go through the software and set everything up. And you can actually change the buttons on the mouse depending on the software that you're using because I have this map completely differently for Photoshop and Lightroom. And if you guys ever want a tutorial on that, let me know. Next tip, select all left or select all right. So here we have the whole entire interview, but let's say I wanted to add something right here. Well, typically what you see is you, you highlight everything, you move it over, you go ahead and grab whatever you want to in there, and then you grab all of that again and move it over, or you click it down in between and hit the reason move over. But that is not at all the fastest way to select and to do all that. Just hit option Y, and that's gonna select everything to the right of the playhead. And you can easily click and drag, insert things right into that point. And there are insert functions. I'll still usually do this because Every now and then a, a track is disabled or not selected and not everything moves over or it, it, the spacing gets off. So for projects like this, it's pretty much done. I just wanna insert one thing and I wanna make sure everything stays aligned. Option Y selects everything to the right of the playhead. Now, if you wanna select everything to the left of the playhead, pretty much the same thing. Command Option Y. And that's gonna select everything to the left of the playhead. Quick and easy way, select it all and you're good. Okay, the next tip is called pancake editing. And what that means is that we're gonna have two timelines on top of each other and you'll see why that is so beneficial. First, go over to the left edge here and click above your timeline and make sure display stacked timelines is selected. When that's selected, you can add timelines to the same exact area and you can click these tabs in between those timelines. But what's even better is if you can stack the timelines on top of each other and move something from one timeline to another. So in order to do that, we're going to hit this add timeline button. Go ahead and click that. And let's say we wanna get a bunch of B-roll from my buddy Solag Local here. And we're going to scroll down, shift click to highlight all of those, bring that in. Now I can scroll through all of this B-roll and let's say I wanna take this section from there to there and I can just click and drag it into this timeline up here and you can edit within multiple timelines. Maybe you want to do a vertical timeline because we live in a vertical world. You can just right click, timelines, create new timeline, uncheck use project settings, go to format and use vertical resolution. I'm going to go back to general and name this vertical and hit create. Now we have a vertical timeline and I can just take my favorite parts of the whole entire interview here and I can just click and drag that down to my vertical timeline, drop that in there. And now I have that whole section in vertical without having to change my project settings on my original timeline. That was a funny spot to pause it. Okay, so let's say you have a bunch of B-roll and you know you want it slowed down, whether it's to 50% or 25%, but you know these clips you shot in 120 frames per second or 60 frames per second and you want them all to be slow and you don't wanna to have to drag each one in, do the speed change, do the ripple timeline. There's a much faster way to just make all of those slow-mo right off the bat. So you can see here that all of these were shot in 120 frames per second because it's just not even playing back, but it's trying to. So if I want all of these to be in slow motion, I'll click the first one, shift, and then click the last one and that's gonna select everything. Now, if I right click and go to clip attributes and go to video frame rate, set that to your timeline frame rate, mine's 29.97. So once I click that, it's going to convert all those 120 FPS clips to 29.97. It's gonna play a nice crispy slow-mo at that 29.97 FPS. You can still speed ramp, just move it to 400% and then let it play at 100% and back to 400%. Make sure you do this in the beginning. If you do your whole entire edit or you're halfway through and you've made some speed changes and then you do this later on, it's going to mess everything up because those clips that you've already speed changed are now gonna be 50%, 20% of this speed and it will look horrible. 
Don't worry, we're not done. I have one more for you. But before we get there, there are so many ways to speed up DaVinci and I had to skip over like six of the tips I wanted to mention and I've probably got about 30 or 40 more. So if you wanna see more videos like this, you wanna see a part two, part three, the whole entire series, please follow along, hit subscribe, hit the bell. Odds are if you're editing, you also like cameras and shooting and filming and I have lots of videos about those subjects as well. So I would love to if you hit that subscribe, watch my videos and let me know what you think. All right, final tip. You've got a vertical video, but you have a horizontal timeline. So maybe you shot something vertically, but you're editing a video that's horizontal, but you just want to throw that clip in there. Now, in order to make that work, you don't want these ugly black bars on the side. So go to your effects, click that search bar and type in blanking. Now this is new with the new release of DaVinci Resolve. Hit this drop down right here and go to all folders. That's going to search through everything in the effects panel. Grab blanking fill, click and drag that on there. And that's kind of what we're used to seeing. And usually you would have to duplicate the clip, scale it up really big, add a blur, but with blanking fill, it just automatically does it for you. So thank you guys for watching this video. Let me know what your favorite tip was down below. Toodles. And there's, there's so many more great tips and it's just, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to make another one of these.